So acceptance and belonging, hugely important for individuals. We all want to be accepted for who we are. And sometimes that behavior is not the greatest in the world, okay? And we all want to belong someplace. Oops, I forgot to turn this on. So I got up late this morning, okay? That's my excuse. All humans need food, shelter, warmth, and acceptance and a sense of belonging. We all have a deep drive to seek acceptance. And when we're rejected, all kinds of anxiety surface, including physical and mental health illnesses. Rejection blocks the need to belong, a powerful motivation. When we have a sense of belonging and that we're accepted by people, we're more encouraged to move forward with our own life goals because we have people we can share them with. Our ability for empathy and rational thought loses its focus and purpose. We become self-focused instead. Oh, woe is me. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. And that kind of thinking can happen. In our quest to be accepted and not rejected, we allow guilt, shame, or embarrassment to signal we committed a faux pas, if indeed we did, say in public. Um, we blush or in other ways indicate our embarrassment or shame so we won't be rejected. Uh, when you blush over a joke or something that you've done, when you spilled something, other people can laugh alongside you and you feel then at one with other folks. Rather than join a social group, however, if you don't feel that sense of belonging, you isolate to avoid potential for rejection. This is a human need, the need for acceptance and belonging. Okay, group pressures. A group can use the threat of rejection to promote pro-social behavior and discourage anti-social behavior. By ostracizing certain persons, such as habitual criminals and moochers, homeless people on the street, because they don't perceive them as being acceptable. Except when a person has chosen a group of like-minded, of course, then the picture is a little bit different. Habitual criminals, moochers, or the homeless, they tend to hang out in groups. This is, and they don't seek new healthier social groups because they don't feel a sense of belonging there. Uh, I know this is why when guys and gals are on probation or parole from the prison, they're told stay away from other criminals because that tends to focus the behavior back on the wrong side of the track, so to speak. Instead, find yourself some healthy people to be around. Learn to gain a sense of belonging, although I'm pretty sure they don't understand it that way or express it that way to the criminal. The homeless people, you know, that's a little bit different picture there to a certain extent. Being part of such a group helps people feel safe, feel like they have a sense of belonging and acceptance. Being excluded can lead to anxiety and poor mental health, as we already saw. A feeling of exclusion and isolation can also contribute to suicide, unfortunately. The consequences of exclusion? Emile Durkheim, cited three types of suicide affected by social factors, and we see them every day in our society. Anomic suicide is there's a disintegrating social force that makes the individual feel lost or alone. Teen suicide is one example. Also those who have been sexually abused as children or whose parents are alcoholics and addicts as well. They, they know something is wrong in the home if they don't know specifically what it is. They know their parents have been ostracized, perhaps not accepted, uh, rejected, and they feel that sense of rejection. This is because there's social forces that make them give them a sense of safety and belonging in the world have, are no longer there. Altruistic suicide is when there's excess regulation by social forces, certain social forces, for the sake of a religious or political cause, such as the 9-11 hijackers, suicide bombers, uh, some of these shooters out there. Egoistic suicide, when we feel totally detached from society. Uh, for example, we lost our work role. We no longer have a sense of purpose. We've lost ties to our family and community and other social bonds through retirement or through death, estrangement of family and friends and so forth. This can lead to the sense of despair and hopelessness. Okay. 
its effect on society. Exclusion is a problem for the person being excluded, but it can also disrupt society, particularly in the media community, but at large as well. People who have been excluded often lash out against others. Feelings of rejection contribute to violence, and we see it more small, you know, in the social system of the schools, in bullying. A majority of school shooters have been, and other people with rifles in their hands killing people, such as Las Vegas, somewhere in their life were socially rejected and still feel that social rejection. Those who feel excluded and rejection rejected are alcoholics and addicts who then frequent the places where they find a sense of acceptance and belonging. Criminals may find the security and belonging in jail or prison. Thus, we see them returning frequently to that social system because it's where they feel safe, they understand the boundaries that are strictly enforced, and society is a lot more flexible. And that helps them to feel insecure. And they're longing for a sense of belonging and security like everyone else. Alcoholics go to bars while addicts often frequent the drug houses and so forth, hang out with other addicts, like-minded people. How to cope with rejection. Oh, let's see, I'm getting ahead of myself. Coping with rejection within healthy boundaries is a key to finding acceptance and a sense of belonging or recovering from rejection, especially when a person is in recovery from drugs, sex, um, lost relationships, looking for, striving for a new way in life. We all are going to experience some rejection on a similar regular basis. It's impossible to live with everyone in the world being nice to you all the time. What's that old saying? You can um, have 100% of the people like you, accept you uh, part of the time, but you cannot have 100% of the people accept, like you, love you 100% of the time. It's simply not going to happen. When you are rejected or excluded, the best way to deal with it, of course, is to seek other sources of friendship or acceptance, other than bars, drug houses, hospitals, suiciders, or the prison system. It's uncomfortable. Any kind of change is always uncomfortable, but it's overcoming that discomfort and succeeding that you begin to feel more secure in yourself, you feel better about yourself, and you begin to develop bonds of social acceptance. Find something you like doing, for example, and do it with healthy people, whether it's in a church or other healthy social group. There's meetup groups, which they, they're people that like to go hiking, so they join, become part of a social group that takes hikes. Uh, swimming groups. Uh, one of the first things I did with my sister, uh, I didn't belong to the AA group, but I did join with her in a social forum where they were putting on a play over in Portland. And together I joined, they asked me if I wanted to be an actress and I said, sure. So I got to act in one of the plays. It was a great, great sense of acceptance and belonging and being able to do something I really enjoyed. Being center stage, well, I wasn't the main character, but just being up on stage and getting to act out in some silly role was hugely empowering. Okay. Everyone encounters rejection in this fallen world. A spouse's betrayal or a job loss can be a huge blow or it can be a minor blow. It depends upon how we perceive it. Yet negative comments or opportunities that dead end can be very hurtful and also offer a sense of rejection. As painful as rejection can be, it doesn't have to work against you you can see it in a more proactive, helpful, helpful way. Rejection can work for you if you use it as an opportunity to create more opportunities for success in your life. Okay, the way you choose to respond to that rejection can affect your confidence, your passion for life, and your motivation, in other words, for pursuing your dreams, your goals in life, and your relationship potential, whether you even reach out <clears throat> towards more healthy, loving, uh, maybe romantic relationships. <clears throat> it will also determine which new opportunities God offers you. If he has a purpose for your life and you've got a clue that there's something out there you should be motivated towards and you don't do it out of fear, 
You know, over 600 times in the Bible, it says, do not fear, be not afraid, or some form of don't fear. I am with you always, and I'm there to uphold you. So if you're running away from, like, who was that character in the Bible? I've got a mind freeze right now. Who God wanted him to go to Nineveh, Jonah. Okay. He ran away to Tarsus, ended up in the belly of a whale, and eventually, because of recognizing that God really wanted him to take this job on, he finally submitted and did God's will. And then, you know, things went better for him. And this is true. When we take a risk and pursue whatever door God has opened in our lives, you know, he offers you other opportunities for success to fulfill other dreams, maybe your personal dreams that he likely has given you as well. You think of them as personal dreams, but if you take on God's purpose, what you know is God's purpose for your life, take a risk, step out, maybe fail and learn from that failure uh, and not worry so much about acceptance and rejection. Just do what the Lord has asked you to do. You know, he's going to offer so much more for you. Responding negatively can stop you from pursuing your own dreams and be discouraging for you. Because then the more negative, no, I'm not going to do that. What if I fail? What if? Those what ifs in life are huge failure indicators. If you're going to say what if, say to yourself, what if I do take this opportunity? What if I fail? So what? No big deal. I can always try something new. When I first started doing live videos on Facebook, for example, the first one went well. Others, people not so much, didn't seem to watch. And I started, oh, I must not have been meant for me. And I thought, you know, but I know God sent me to do this. I'm going to persist in doing it. And then I found other venues where I could produce live shows, such as Zoom.us, and other ways to produce, you know, shows and ways of helping people other than one person at a time in my counseling office. Okay, responding positively in such a way can help empower you to achieve God's purpose for your life, especially if you don't know exactly what that is. He opens these small doors to give you small opportunities to grow your courage and commitment. You decide to redirect the pain of rejection by using it to design a better life. Excuse me. And to motivate yourself to move forward in life, taking on greater challenges strengthening your self-image, your courage. And as you do, people begin to connect with you. You feel a greater sense of belonging and acceptance if people reject your idea. Well, you remember David and Goliath? His brother said, what are you doing here? Go back, you know, when he went to Saul's army with food for them and saw the giant Goliath. And his brother says, what are you doing here? Go home, tend the sheep. Why did you leave them? He said, did not God send me for a reason? <laughs> and then David went about pursuing that purpose. But first he turned to another group of people, other soldiers, and said, what's my reward if I defeat this giant? They gave him respect by sharing, you know, what he, how he would benefit from. The benefits were huge. So besides God's will being done, he also wanted to know what are the personal benefits for me. Well, you have to decide. What are the benefits for you? Personal benefits besides following God's will. How are you going to feel if you succeed? How are you going to overcome failures if you happen to fail? How are you going to continue to pursue that dream and not worry so much about it? And look forward to the rewards. Reject the distorted view you have of being rejected, for example, and look at you as God sees you. You're a child of the living God. King of kings, Lord of lords. <laughs> okay. Make a list of all your God-given qualities that make you unique and remind yourself of them when you need a refresher. You know, like when the devil's on your back and you're starting to feel in the whiny, poor me, oh, this is never going to work. Get out of yourself. Get into God. Look at, now wait a minute. God's given me the ability to talk to just about anybody. I have no problem making a fool of myself on Facebook doing these things. If I fail, so what? I'll try something different next time. You know, list all your God-given qualities that make you unique, that make you who you are, and remind yourself of them when you need a refresher course of who you are. 
Okay. Admit you're not perfect and can never be like everyone else. Stop trying to be perfect to please God or anyone else. It's never going to happen. Remember, even when others reject you, God never will. Refuse to listen to unproductive words from other people. If they're not helpful, stop talking to them. Say, you know, that's not really very helpful. You know, I hear from you a lot of negative things. I really need somebody who's going to support and encourage me. Are you able to do that? If not, I need to find a friend. You know, well, you don't have to be quite that boldly outspoken. You may be more, choose to be a little more subtle. I tend to be a little more bold and say that, you know, this is really not helpful. <clears throat> Can you see yourself encouraging me in some way? This is what I really need from you. Okay. Instead, renew your mind by meditating on God's word. Especially God's love for you and verses that are encouragement for you. Replace negative thoughts with positive ones. Dr. Carolyn Leaf has some great books out. Uh, if you go to my website, I'm pretty sure I have a, a synopsis of one that just gives the bare bones basics of how to change your thinking and change your life. Okay. Pray for the Spirit's help changing your internal dialogue, that negative stuff and focus on a more positive internal dialogue. Don't get upset about your weaknesses, focus on your strengths. Instead of aiming for perfection, aim to do your best every single day. Have achievable goals. You know, are they measurable, achievable, something you're willing to do and will do? If they're, you know, I can say, well, I'm gonna go climb the mountain because I really like to go climb a mountain, but I know in my heart there's no way I'm gonna do that. That would be just idiocy for me to try to do something like that. So make sure they're achievable. Relax, be flexible, and embrace change. Fears of abandonment. Ask God to show you how you can rely on him. Read the scriptures. When dealing with human relationships, count on God's love and his presence in your life, not people who may fail you and who may not fail you if you endure with them they may endure with you. Eliminate unhealthy relationships and focus on more healthy ones. Be honest with yourself. Don't hang on to a relationship just because. If it's not healthy for you, get out and get gone. Okay, honestly consider the value of all your current relationships and what way are they helpful to you? You know, are you helpful to that person? And do they reciprocate at all? Are you okay with being the one giving in that relationship? Or do you have expectations? You know, love is giving for the sake of giving without getting anything back. And it's okay to have that type of relationship, just not that kind of exclusive relationship. You need relationships where you're receiving as well. Pray for the wisdom to determine which people in your life right now are or are not worthy of your trust time, and effort. Assess those who influence you positively and those who impact you negatively. And if it's all negative, you really don't need that sort of thing in your life, if you, especially if your spiritual well is not full right now and you can't give to that person. And if they're not accepting of your giving, let go of unhealthy relationships and focus only on safe, healthy people people who can be positive and helpful in some way. From now on, choose to invest only in relationships in which you can participate in a healthy flow of mutual commitment and contribution. Family rejection. All families are made up of broken people who are broken in some way. They hurt and reject others at times. Realize social rejection is about the other person's inability to love and not about you and your worthiness for love. You are worthy of love and you're worthwhile. Only God can love you perfectly, so always count on him to do so. Other people are gonna fail you at times. Instead of wasting your time and energy on trying to keep the love of a family member who maybe has rejected you over and over again, this is not the inconsistent, well, today's not a good day and you feel rejected. 
This is a family member who consistently rejects you repeatedly. You know, don't count on them. Focus on drawing closer to God to experience more of his love in your life. And avoid that person if at all possible. Protect yourself from rejecting family members by setting firm boundaries in your relationship with them. And then reinforce those boundaries in kind, loving ways. Um, next week, we'll be looking at boundaries and how to apply them in our life. Okay. Honesty in all situations. There's no room for white lies. Not being honest in all situations makes you vulnerable to being used and manipulated by people with selfish intentions. You don't need that in your life. And you don't need the consequences. If you're not honest, you know, and loving, forgiving, and caring, God's not going to answer your prayers. Ask God to give you the courage you need to tell yourself and other people the absolute truth in a kind, loving way, even when it's uncomfortable to do so. Yeah, telling the truth can hurt somebody's feelings. I told a lady the truth one time about something. She backed off. You know, I told her, I said, I can't be around you because of this. And I walked away. It was months later, six, seven months. And she called me one day and she says, I'm so sorry. You were right. Please forgive me. And restored the relationship. It was fabulous. That doesn't always happen. But you have to be willing to endure the consequences, not suffer. Endure the consequences that will make you stronger by doing what you know is right in God's sight. Improve the way you communicate. Communicate love to others in all of your relationships. The book of John says, you know, show love to other people in everything you think, say, and do so others will know the love of God is in you. And being honest in your communication doesn't mean you have to be harsh and cruel. Learn what you can from criticism, but don't let it discourage you. I have found that oftentimes there's a lot of truth in criticism because the other person doesn't know how to tell me the truth in a less than harsh way, doesn't mean I can't say, you know, I'm not sure I agree with what you just said, but I'll get back to you on that, and then take my hurt feelings off someplace, take an honest look at them, and decide if some part of what they said, was it true or not? If it's not, dismiss it, and tell them that, you know, I don't really accept what you said, that was not okay. Or if it was true in some way, which I had a boyfriend one time who told me the truth that really hurt, and I told him, I said, you know, I'll think about this and get back to you. And I did. And I had to tell him, you know, some of what you said was very true. Um, I'm going to try to make some change there. He almost fell off his chair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Communicate regularly with God through prayer and meditation. Meditating on the scriptures. Let go of your past in order to remove, to remove it. Yeah, to remove it and move forward. You know, if you had harsh criticism and judgment as a child or even as an adult from people in your past, move past it. Move forward in a brighter future. Don't hold on to any damaging or unproductive past stuff. Seek God's healing to discover healthy relationships. Change pain for joy. Experience freedom from your past. Mm, excuse me and grow into your fullest potential in the future. Pursue God's dreams for you. If rejection has you not pursuing your dreams, let yourself dream again. Maybe you had a dream in childhood. I did, I wanted to be an artist, and I had a family member who came to see me. And I, he said, what do you want to do when you get out of here? And I was in the state school at the time. And I said, well, I want to be an artist. And he says, you can't do that and expect to make a living. Instead of saying, oh, that's a great idea but you might want to think having a full-time job so you can support yourself in the meantime. But he didn't do it. He was pretty harsh and hard-nosed about it. So I lost my dream. Years later, I came back to it. And now I do art, maybe not as a profession, but as a fun project, while I earn my living in other ways. And so, you know, dream again. Don't let your childhood dreams or your earlier dreams, you know, get lost. Ask God to show you his dreams for you and for the courage to pursue them. Look forward to what your future will bring. As you trust God to help you make those dreams come true. This is Dr. Brandy Marks, Biblical and Licensed Mental Health Counselor. 
most of these videos will be uploaded to my website as well as Facebook. My website, as you can see, is www.dotcrossd.org. O-R-G, sorry. God bless. Have a wonderful day, and thanks for tuning in.